said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch, you filthy! <laughs> Welcome to Flyover State of Fear, and we're back in person with a special guest this time, <laughs> Sam Scrotta. Uh, hi, Sam. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Joe. Thank hi. you for having me. Uh, as you can see, uh, well, you can't read, but, uh, or here, we're doing the movie House tonight, uh, but as always, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Sam, so tell us about yourself, and uh, uh, yeah. Before we, uh, you know, go with the usual questions. Yeah, cool. Um, well, I'm Sam. I'm a librarian. <laughs> uh, I really like horror movies and books. Um, I think, I think my horror origin is oh, yeah, the so same no, as Evans. <laughs> the, well, for the for <laughs> the listeners, what yeah, is your horror? Our, origin our regular. Story? Yeah, there, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, so what is what would your horror origin story? Uh, Evan is uh, Sam's brother, who was on uh, episode two, I believe, for The Shining. Um, the two of three in person guests we've only had so far, so this is really fun. <laughs> um, so, but what you know, what um, what would that be then? Like, what was well, your insight to? You know, like, I guess, what the sense of the origin story, what it's liking, you know, what, how did you know if you liked it or not, or if you yeah. didn't, and then yeah. like, when did you discover yeah. it? Because I, I think those are two totally different things. Oh, yeah. I think, I think my first, the first time I, like, dipped my toes into horror was, was reading. I read, I think the first horror books I read were The Shining, Carrie, Psycho, Cujo, and It. Oh, wow. And I was in, like, eighth grade reading it, seventh or eighth grade. And okay. And after I read The Shining, my dad was like, "Well, you read the you read the book, so let's watch the movie." But I was like twelve, and <laughs> it's it, older than most for a while. Like, I yeah, mean, like yeah. not most, but it's not that young. I think to be introduced, that's like when you should be introduced yeah. to something you know like what? The Shining. I like that. I like that. But you also read the books, which is wild. But you're also a librarian, yeah. and so it's all links. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I loved it, and but I kind of got sidetracked, I guess. For a few years, I like things would really scare me. Like tra sure. trailers were like too much for me. Horror trailers, and I don't think I trailers I got are like scarier than yes yes because they're just edited. In a yeah, way. they want to scare you, especially that era of like movies, right? Like yeah, like what mid two thousands ish. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They learned how to edit a trailer. I was just listening to a podcast today, and they were talking about that god awful Michael Keaton movie, White Noise. Oh my god! But they were like that trailer was terrifying. I'm like listening to that episode and going, uh, "Dead Meat Podcast, really good podcast, give it a listen." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that scare that trailer was terrifying." Yeah. And then like after that, like all true. So I I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It. Um. So so I guess it's besides The Shining and uh, that much, well, I guess what made you come out of being scared of like just trailers? I think. I, I think I started watching the AMC Fear Fest yeah. every year, and I got like me and my me and my friend Devin were wa we would watch the Halloween sequel. We would like it would only be Halloween oh, sequel. Yes, I feel like on yes. AMC Fear we Fest, we would obsessively forever. watch four and five. Yeah, and <laughs> and was, I was like, this how was this scaring me like four years ago? Yeah, it was so silly. Just like the Jamie Lloyd one. Yeah, over and over again. Yeah, see, at least like. You said like what two thousand eight maybe yeah seven like yeah it was yeah, yeah. so it, it yeah it was it was like high school ish and then I, like then Saul came out and I was mm -hmm. like and I watched that with my dad also yeah and well, Saul originally I feel like also is just like with the dad the dad level of it yeah my, like my brother was at more at that time with my dad I'm really gonna go see it 
But it was like, oh, what a twist yes, ended. Yes. A detective movie. Not <laughs> that's, like that's love being like, what a twist. What oh a twist. God. What a good detective. Like, <laughs> not just like, oh, it's torture porn. Yeah. Like yeah. a few years later, it's like, yeah, I don't want to watch like just people getting mutilated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tried to watch, I tried to do like a saw rewatch before Spiral. And I got three in and I was like, I, I don't I did do a this. I can't do this. I did it a couple years ago. I was going to say recently. And like all those things, they all kind of blend together, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of them just, you're like, okay, fast forward and a cool kill. And you're kind of like, oh, how they connect it back? Yeah. So yeah. I don't ever pick Saul. I hope you pick Saul. But, yeah. Um, but you know, not. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess, okay. Um, yeah, that's a pretty like linear, like normal, like, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Oh, like, I, I watched like the Sixth Sense in middle school. Yeah. Like, like the ring, the ring scared the shit out of me. Who didn't? I know. Who did it? Obviously. So. And The Grudge. Grudge. Like, they... I'm, I'm more, like, enamored that you were reading, like, scary books. <laughs> like, I remember yeah. trying to read, uh, because, like, my brother and whatnot, and he didn't read anyone's listening, he didn't read it. But I remember, like, having the book Cujo around. Oh, yeah. And never reading it, because of more page intimidation. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty thick. <laughs> well, I think the first one I read was Carrie, because it's pretty thin, uh -huh. and it's, it's, I think that was Stephen King's first major so book, when you or the first one that came out. So when you watched, uh, just back to The Shining real quick, like an insight Ed and didn't have because yeah. you mentioned the book. Yeah, I think you just mentioned that you were watching it and he was watching it. Yeah, and your dad and um, were you like cognizant of like differences from book to movie? Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, where's the where's the uh, animal head? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, at that's the time like the I big... was like, I was like, what the hell? That was so cool in the book, but now looking back on it. It would have... You know the differences. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember staying home, um, God, all day watching. We did this twice, weirdly, two Stephen King things. In high school, like freshman or sophomore year, so still like more younger, staying home and watching the two, or the It miniseries and being like, oh, this is actually like bad. Like, yeah. Being old enough yeah. to be like, oh, this is bad. Why yeah. are we afraid of this? And then the Shining miniseries that was Stephen yes. King's accurate yes, I was adaptation. just thinking about that. <laughs> and that Hedge Mage looks Awful. So bad. Remember, like, it sucks. And like, stay like stayed home like Saturday. Be like, oh, we could go do things. No, no, we're we're trapped into this really long commitment to watch what like three hours yeah. probably. Yeah. Anyway, I I recently rewatched the It miniseries, and I I don't know what like I thought that felt like it was like six mm -hmm. hours long. When I think I was people are just like like high school, but and now yeah. it's like oh okay. I think there's like also that lane of like you're either really as nostalgic for it or you don't care. Yeah. I, I would say I'm pretty nostalgic Yeah, you should it, be. But it's, it's just so silly. It was so silly because the book scared the hell out of me. That, I, there, was, there was a point where that was the scariest thing I, I'd read for like a long time. I'll say I have to read it, but like I'm you, not going to read it. It's, too, read. It's, it's long. It's too long. I do need to read a book, but like I usually settle for like really easy Star Wars reads. Hell even yeah. those have become exhausting. <laughs> Alright, so house before we even begin every person who hopefully ever listened to this you know is all spoilers but i don't think there's anything to spoil about house because it is indescribable um i, I it's more of a watch like really you should watch like watch this that movie don't listen to this it's it, like i knew nothing about it i watched it last night um and I did think all the time, what the fuck am I watching? But I was mesmerized by it uh, before we even, like, get into talking about it. And before, I'm going to read the back of the DVD, yeah. uh, the Blu-ray, because I think that's, like, the best write-up of, like, to give, like, sort of a synopsis to listeners. Yeah. But, like, why did you pick House before, or do you want me to read the synopsis? No, whatever, whatever you want. Okay. You, you all can right. read it. You can read I'll it. read the synopsis, and then you're going to tell me why you picked House, because... <laughs> As a uh, listener, no, I, I try to ask, what's something you want to talk about or, like, something that means something to you? So I'm really curious to hear Sam's thoughts about, not only about the movie, but why she picked it. All right, so this is just, if you actually look up on Wikipedia, the synopsis, it's, like, three sentences. Yeah, and it goes yeah, right yeah, to yeah. the point. I mean, <laughs> this is a little more different. Uh, so Criterion did put this movie out. Uh, it's 1977's House. Um, how to describe... Uh, Obayashi's uh, indescribable 1977 movie, House. As a psychedelic ghost tale, a stream of conscious bedtime story, an episode of Scooby-Doo as directed by Mario Bava, 
any of the above will do for the hallucinatory tale. Ha Lucinary head trip about the schoolgirl who travels with her six classmates to her ailing aunt's creaky country home and comes face to face with evil spirits, a demonic house cat, a bloodthirsty piano, and an other ghoulish visions, all realized by Obia Ashi's via Manet's animation, collage effects, equally absurd and nightmarish. House might have been beamed to Earth from some other planet. Never before available to them. Yeah. So, that honestly is a fine description about everything because it is all those things. It is this, like, it is a dream. It is also an episode of Scooby Doo. It's surrealist. I mean, it is. Yeah. Or else, and I could almost say here to this day. It's playing behind us. Um, I can almost say here to this day. I hope this podcast has a very longevity. This will be the weirdest movie we've ever watched <laughs> on the show or not so sam why did you pick this <laughs> well first of all i i wanted you to watch it yes i, I start with that yes. i just really want you to see it but also like i think that like you just said that description is so apt and it because it really is all of those things it's almost like Five different movies. It's almost like like five different directors. But I mean, like look, look at what's going on. Like, yeah. it's like Rashomon. Like it's so well, insane. Yeah, it's every it's it's every style. Yeah, yeah. Um, it feel it even feels like an anime. At, like yeah. I just it's insane. It's insane. So all right. So I was doing a I was doing as much research as I can on, on this movie, and uh, I and you did make me watch it. I will next Criterion sale. I'll be buying it for Blu-ray. I'm sure. Oh. Um, but, well, so the director, it's really cool. So he wrote this script and Toho, so this is a Toho production, which Toho is like, it's like Japan's like paramount. I mean, they're, they're, they're known for Godzilla and I, I'm sure some other like major movies, but Godzilla is the big, yeah. big one. All the kaiju. So late seventies, they reach out and they, um, and this is like a really popular film, um, commercial director, which I think really shows in the movie. And they say, we want you to write a script that rivals Jaws. It's the most baffling thing about this movie is that it's supposed <laughs> to be, didn't know that. Yes, it is supposed to be Japan's answer to Jaws. That was a script. Uh, so he goes and he writes it and it's like, what? It, it, there's no connecting it. Um, I mean, I think there's like a, like a dolly zoom at one point. Maybe that's the only yeah, connection. Yeah. Um, so he writes it, but he also implores his, and she's credited as a story thing, his 10 year old daughter. Cause it, uh, you could only get these sort of like ideas and visuals from yeah. your, yeah. from a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, it, it's really interesting. Um, but so I guess I'll try to run through this movie as fast as we can. Like it, 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 it's like you said, it's it's wacky. And even before they had a script, I'm sorry. Yeah, even before they had a like a a, a proof for production, um, no one wanted to make it. Yeah, like everyone's like blah blah blah. So Obiashi, I hope I'm saying his name right. If not, I'm not. Uh, was like, well, then I'll, I'll make it. Got the funding to make it. He didn't think he would get funding. Apparently, it came in, like, hours. But before that even happened, and I don't even know how this is possible, he made a manga of it and and, play, and passed it around, uh, a radio play of it. Mm -hmm. Like, basically, everything to sell the movie yeah. without actually having a script. Yeah. Um, so that, so how, how does this even become a radio play? Yeah. What is, like... <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, what is the narrative? <laughs> so... Okay, um, yeah, we start off and like you have this, these schoolgirls, you have Gorgeous, all the girls are named um, just by their bare minimum of, like personality trait. Uh, I wrote them all down, Gorgeous, Fantasy, Mac, uh, Kung Fu, who was the best. Uh, yes, yes, in this uh, house. We prof and uh, Sweet, and that's the only name that doesn't really add up because I think she's sweet because she cleans all the time. Yeah, yeah. But I don't... I know it's a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, Sam. So, what's going on here is, like, my... My, my main question of this. <laughs> um, 
Did Bill Hader, like, convince you to watch this movie? No, my cousins did. <laughs> this was a cousin thing. <laughs> okay, so that actually, so, like, how did you discover this movie? Even, okay, I know it sounds weird, like, before we're even jumping all this, like, how did you discover this? Because it didn't come to the U.S. till 2009. Yeah, it was, it was my cousins, and it was, like, a few years ago. My cousins mm-hmm. are, they're into some weird stuff. <laughs> no, that sounds perverted. <laughs> They, really they like, of stuff. course, my cousins, like, they, they introduced us to Miyazaki, and, like, they, yeah. they got us spirited, they, they got us so spirited while we were kids. Um, Miyazaki also, I think. Yeah. That was the other yeah. big name. Um, and this just, I don't know, that kind of, it kind of felt like a natural step, like, introducing me to yeah. Miyazaki as a middle schooler and introducing me to House as an adult. Yeah, because, like you said, they, they, it's indescribable, so we're doing our best to describe it. But it that makes sense. Like I think if I didn't have you, I wouldn't have been introduced to this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't like this is a movie you're gonna have to pick the person to introduce to. Yes. Like it can't oh, yeah. just be like, we're gonna watch this movie yes. and you're gonna get it. Yeah. Uh because I think like ninety eight percent of people I know would be like, uh, yes, I completely I'm not asking agree. you for a recommendation <laughs> again. Yeah. Because anyway, so it, this girl, I mean, and everyone's played in this movie very like, well, they're com- it's commercial. I mean, it's also a very shot like a commercial yeah, from the seventies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all the actor, all the actresses and actors, except for the two, I think the grandma, not the grandma, sorry, the aunt and gorgeous, are actors are, are actors, and the rest are models. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're all great. I mean, it, it's. Kind of hard to be a bad actor in this movie. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so they like gorgeous. Like she's clearly our focus. She's schoolgirl, and to her her girlfriend, she's like, "Yo, we're um, oh, your summer plans got canceled. Well, I'm gonna go to my aunt's. You guys should come. Gets approval to come. Finds out also her her father, her mother's passed, and her father, um. Who yeah? Who I was getting her father and Mister to- to- uh, Togo oh. confused <laughs> the whole movie. Um, because the one girl That's is just fair. simping over this Mister Togo yes. guy, which I think is honestly just like, same. But... Which he's just like a like a professor there or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, he's, he's just like randomly teacher. driving around in yeah. like a car. Anyway, so um, so her father like he's a film director i believe and he comes back and he's like well here's my new here's i'm going to be marrying this woman or were they married yet i i don't think they were i don't married think yet. they were married that but was he, like he was like she's going to be a new mom. yeah you mean, and <laughs> every time they show her it's really funny so this is also a comedy by the way like it's creep like i think there's moments that are really creepy yeah but it's a, it's a comedy yes. but when you see the new mother um did not write her name down uh, I don't know if she, we ever learned her name. Yeah. Actually. They have this aggressive wind blowing up at her, and she's walking, you know, as she's just like, uh, more than, like, like she's coming out of a, like, a perfume yes. like, catalog. It, it's that perfect, like, like, 40s, like, yeah. black and white start, like, it's like Mary Bailey and <laughs> It's a Wonderful Life. Yes, it's so no, good. It's, it's so good. So that happens, and the girl is like, well, no, I'm, I'm going to my aunt's. I don't want to be with you guys. And, like, tone shift hard because all of a sudden, like, oh, she hates this. Yeah. Like, yeah. She's very, like, happy until, like, yeah. you realize she's not. And then they do a crazy travel sequence. Yes. I'm obsessed. Uh, I mean, this movie, like, has the map paintings. I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie Cabin Boy? No. No. We covered it on Flower once. It's also just this, like, surrealist. That's Chris Elliott? Yeah. It's just, but it's, like, kind of like this. It's this, like, surrealist, like, comedy that just looks crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it reminded me a lot of of this movie. Um I think I Brian oh, I messaged him about it and I'm like, yo, what Oh my god. And he goes, Oh yeah, it's Snow White just with the girls of, from Suspiria. That's amazing. Yeah, and I was like, That's I told him I'm stealing it from him. But I'm oh like, oh, that, that is That's what I'm so watching. Good. Um so anyway, they but they travel and I like I, said, I don't know how to describe the traveling scene because it's a big part of the movie. Yeah. Um and this this movie is mesmerizing. It's 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 gorgeous. Like I just uh, it's the first time I watched it, I was just like amazed. Well, it's so it's it's so like it is like objectively pretty at well, a lot of points. I don't even know as pr- pretty. It, 
is it is pretty at points, but yeah, I would yeah, have yeah. said mesmerizing. I mean, that's that score. Oh my god! That, that, that that's what kept me engaged. It's like it's like, it's like you're being hypnotized. Yes, that's and what I, kept me those engaged. Those notes are insane. Uh, because anyway, so they get they like that, and it changes. It's always it's like really short, and yeah. it kind of get but you like want to keep hearing it. Like yeah. when the movie breaks away from it, it's noticeable. Yeah. This movie will. Uh, and please interrupt me at any time. I'm just rambling. This movie will like change course of how it's shot, how it sounds, how it looks at the drop of a hat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That uh, that's why it feels like it's. That's why I said it feels like it's like a, a collaboration between different directors. Yeah, like it just feels like sometimes different directors are assigned to like different characters, but like in a good way. It, it's not bad. I think it's cool. Yeah, in a, in a way, I think the back of the coverage goes this way. It's a collage. The whole yeah. movie is, yes. feels like a collage. Yes. It feels like yeah. a mood board. Yeah. Yes. Even how it yes. looks, right? Like, yeah. oh, let me cut this up and, like, I'm going to put these, like, boots in this red car and, yeah. like, this even, house Even some on of it. the, like, effects oh, look they, like that. Yeah. Like, and it's... Oh, they have... I've never seen anything like it and I don't think I... I don't ever think we ever will. Yeah. I think anyone who, like, mimics it, it, it I'm sure people have it. Yeah. It's not going to work. I don't want to... I don't want to see it. Look, um, I just don't even want it. And... Because they're really isn't like much story and I was actually really surprised um to find out that they actually do give us an exposition of what's going on at the end which blew my mind because there's no other exposition in this yeah. whole movie yeah 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 uh so anyway the girls get to this house um by the way they uh here they have a cat um called Blanche Blanche rules I don't know like Love cats Blanche, Blanche Love rules Blanche. Dream and cat. uh they show up Auntie Auntie's really weird uh, she's in a wheelchair, not for long. Cool sunglasses. Just, she's yeah, just rocking <laughs> Oh! You're rocking a bob. And was it just me, or did, like, the girls that showed up seem like a surprise to her? Yeah, I don't think she was expecting... Yeah. I think she was expecting gorgeous. I think just gorgeous. Yeah. Because she goes, oh, it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then chaos. Oh, the... Well, I'm sorry, Mac is holding a watermelon, yes, and it cool. has to make me think, though, that, like, so Mac is, literally, they, they explain later, she's called Mac because of her stomach. Yes. Yeah. But, <laughs> she's not big, like. I know! Like, she's not even big, like, that bigger than any of the other girls. Like, she's skinny, like. Yeah. And I don't know if that's, like, j like, 1970, like, Japanese bit, like, supposed to be big for yeah. their culture, yeah. or just, like. An odd commentary on this movie. I think I I think it's just a, like seventies like diet culture <laughs> a little awesome. bit like it's so ridiculous. Um, big note I have of this, and I was gonna um, well, I'll ask you whenever, but is like it the movie has to mean something like it, movie like something this odd. Yeah. Like it, yeah. it has to mean something. Yeah. Like there has to be an allegory in there somewhere yeah. or like like because that's like i don't know i remember in art school like that's just like 101 they're like you can't just do weird shit yeah. to do weird <laughs> yeah, shit it'll yeah. fall apart yeah you need to have a purpose so we do find out about the ant um and i think this is the movie's purpose i think it's generation versus generation yeah yeah um um yeah, like they the um that she was waiting for her husband in war and he never came home. Yeah. And that's really important to the, the, the twist at the end. Uh, can you call it a twist? I no. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, so she... So... Um, and I... Because they, they show Hiroshima. They show the bomb drop. And uh, the director, I believe, grew up in Hiroshima. So he lost a lot of friends. And I do think, at the core of this movie, it's a commentary... On the kids of that day not knowing what it was like. Uh, I've definitely stolen this from, like, a lot of the other things I listened to about yeah, today. Because yeah. I was, like, really trying to find all this information for us. Yeah. So, anyway, the girls are there. And the one, Mac has a watermelon. Yes. Can you, you talk on the watermelon? Because the watermelon sure. is, they do stop <laughs> and pick up this watermelon from the most absurd character Oh, in the he's movie. so weird. He's, he's so weird. So great. Yeah. They, so, they... they Stop at this like farm stand and <laughs> and ask. I think they ask the guy for directions to the house, and he's like the titular house, and he's like he's like nobody's been up there for years. Yeah. <laughs> and but and, he's not a um, God. What do they call on the Fridays? 
thirteenth, like a like a like a doom like the harbinger. Yeah, like, like a doom harbinger. <laughs> yeah, he's, not, he's like, really not. Like he's he's like well, like but he's so he's just so silly. later he turns into a bunch of bananas. Right, right, um, right. Which it might be my favorite part of the whole movie. Yes, so good, insane. So. I don't know, I have this watermelon, and, like, immediately, you're like, that's weird to begin with. Like, watermelons are just goofy. <laughs> I'm sorry, they are. They're goofy fr- is fruit. Is watermelon a fruit? Yeah, Yeah, it's yes. goofy fruit. Yes. So, um, but I'm looking at my pad of notes. There's, it's just chicken scratch. This is not. Love it. Love it. The watermelon guy, actually, I'm glad it was the composer of the movie. What? And, I never and, knew that. And a good, a good fact about that, and this is the type of stuff that I was really only able to find, is... He wanted. He thought he was making a serious movie, oh, which doesn't make sense of his performance. But he was I like, lo- "I love that." He was like, "Oh well, I want to score for a serious movie." Yeah. Like I, apparently, like I guess they read the scripts differently. And why when I say scripts, I mean, was there a script? Uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I at its core, you know, I think it is. It is like a haunted house story, it's, and it is a story about like a girl coming to terms with the death of her mother, and mm-hmm. I, maybe that's that, what he took that's from what I say, it. Like. And, like is is um that has to be like part of like what that is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh and it is a haunted house story through and through. I mean the the tag tagline of that description of is it just real life Scooby Doo? Yeah, because it is also animated like Scooby Doo. Oh yeah. Because you have these oh, weird God, like yeah. animations. Anyway, so they go into the house and is it the ant that green eyes the, the camera out of the hand? So there's a thing where the these green oh, eyes yeah. flash. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, and it's the ant that does that at first. You're like, okay, supernatural stuff's gonna happen, and then just kind of like lo- like Looney Tunes of takes place like for each character. Yes, and they yes. do get picked off one by one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first one. It's being, a little bit of a slasher. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of everything. Um, and was it before? Was it? No, it was before anyone got picked up. Um, this speaks on Kung Fu, so Kung Fu will break into legit Kung Fu. Yes, There's with no with thing. insane score to Matt. Like, yeah. it's so, it's like, so good. Like, everything Quentin Tarantino has ever tried to copy. Yeah, like, he, that's, he wishes. <laughs> he wishes. That's what this Kung Fu she does. And, but was it? When they were opening, like, just, like, a, like a closet? And they were like, no. Kung Fu has it. Was it that? And she, like, just gets up to kick the, the Oh, yeah. Open. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. She's, that's she's like, kicking doors. And that's, like, like, while it's still hot, like, like nothing crazy has yeah, happened yeah. yet. And you're, like... She is in the air, like, pretty early on. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's, like, another element. There's a girl there also named Fantasy. So they'll be, like, she fantasizes. So they're, like, I guess she's always a little skittish, too, because she fantasizes. So they'll be, like, no, 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 you're just, like, dream, like dreaming. So there's a lot of that going on yeah. when all this is going on. Yeah. This is all real. So yeah. the, the events of this yes. movie, I take everything as happens. Yes, yes. Um... So anyway, the girls get there. I don't know. At first, it's just weird, and they all sit down to eat. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm jumping probably a lot here. Uh, and I think the creepiest part does happen with the eye in the. It's ant- literally about to happen. Oh. Right now. So it's if you're watching, it is behind me, and it is. I you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it's so unsettling. Oh yeah. Um, but a lot of this movie, except isn't unsettling. I was telling Laura like. She won't, if I'm watching something for this podcast, she won't look. And I go, I go, honestly, you could, yeah. you you want to be able to figure out what's going on. And yeah. like, I have t- two moments that truly like, were like, ah, I'm uncomfortable or creepy. Yeah. This one, and then Gorgeous in the Mirror. Oh, yeah. Oh, Super I love creepy. That. Um, but anyway, they go and they're like, well, we're eating dinner, right? And she pulls up, this Mac goes out and she pulls, they put them. The watermelon in the well, because that's, like, the fridge of the house, pulls out the watermelon, but it's a person's head, and this is when things get, like, bloody. Because this movie wants to show you a lot of gore and blood. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, pretty and it's, gory. Yeah, and it's 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 soupy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't... Love it, love um, it. She picks up a human head, and then Mac disappears. <laughs> I, I th- so I think, I think Mac goes outside to put put the watermelon in the well, and then she gets killed. Yes. But I, now I can't remember what, how she well, She doesn't, like, they don't show her dying. Yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be... And the head that comes out is her... I think, I think Fantasy picks out, picks oh, her head. Yeah, you're right. She, she goes to retrieve the watermelon, 
and it's Max head, and then Max head like bites her on the and, butt, and, and that's, <laughs> it's so it's so silly. And that's another thing of this. It is it is like really incomparable because things just kind of start happening, and you're like, "What the fuck's going yeah, on?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a scene where a bunch of mattresses and sheets fall yeah. down to murder who? I don't even I remember. Sweet. I think that was sweet. That was sweet. Um, also, like, I just want to comment on, like, the girl. speaking of sweet, these girls are like, we want to come to your aunt's house, so gorgeous and everything, and they just get there and they just start offering to work. Yeah. Well, I, I guess maybe because she's... Hosting and yeah, and she's older and she's presumably but they were sick. Like, like yeah, but they were like yeah, we got yeah, it, we got like, everything. We'll but they just start everything. working. We'll like cook immediately. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I don't know. It's just off the rails. It, it, it is. It is absolutely batshit bonkers. And Melody, who I think has the most memorable like moment. Oh yeah. Um, and Melody is playing the piano, and there's this piano, and she plays the tune of the, 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 the movie, and then her, the piano eats her fingers. That, now, that is the, that is the creepiest thing That's for me. That's, I, I can't, it's what? This is the daughter thought, that was part of one oh of Oh my dreams. god, see? That's, a, that's of course. Yeah. That, I, it's just like the, the way the fingers are, like, cut off, like, it just, Oh, it, it it's gets, weird, and then, like, there's, like, this like and body just kind of floating around, yeah, and, like, yeah. The just fingers parts. are still playing after yeah. it happens. Um, I just love, like, a good practical effect. You know this. Yes. And, and it's just... Th this is just, like, practical effects just done <laughs> by, like, <laughs> by, like, by, like, video masking. I know. It's, it's not, insane. like... It's insane. It's not even, like, oh, we built these prosthetics and this thing's coming. It's yeah. just, like... No, um, you know what? You're gonna stand here, actor, and then we're just gonna green, yes. Uh, yes. blue screen out your hand, and then this is your disembodied hand. But it's it's just that. Yes. Um. God, what else happens in this movie? I I like it's truly like my. I don't know. You should just watch it. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Uh. Yeah. So. I don't know what what like what. The cat is falling around also. And we do lose aunt, um, the ant after a while. And the ant, I think this is when we lose her too, is she, there's this scene, there's this scene where the people are like in the foreground kind of talking. Um, and you see the fridge in the background and she just walks into the fridge and then she comes right into your screen. Yeah. Yeah. And then I feel like we don't see the ant. Yeah. And she gives like a wink. She's like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't feel like we don't see the ant ever again. Till yeah, till till the Well, I think because she's like fully like transforming in her past self. Yeah. I guess the more girls that she kills and consumes, she's So yeah, and then that absorbing and that's what's their given. like energy. So and then gorgeous also I felt it, like, she kind of eats it early, gorgeous. Or at least to the movie, like, she's getting all dolled up, like, uh, traditional, like, I would assume traditional Japanese, yeah. like, makeup. And yeah, it, I think it was, like, a wedding. Wedding. A wedding oh, okay. And she's she's putting everything on. And that's when that scene of the mirror, like, I hate it so much. Um, like, she's going through it and she looks back and then, like, fire and flame. And like I said, I think that's also part of, like, the Hiroshima analogy of it all. I have um, never that has never I, even crossed my I mind, don't and I love that, that from something today. Yeah. Um, just watching it. One of my notes, just to say, like, ask family this movie is about. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, so then we lose her, and then it's just kung fu and oh God, prof. I prof think. Kung and they're fu like and prof. investigating. Yeah, they're like, oh, our friends are missing, and like they just kind of keep shouting. And Kung Fu goes into crazy Kung Fu. And then they realize it's <laughs> it's uh, it's Blanche. <laughs> yes. Like it's the cat. Yes. The cat yes. controls everything. Yes. And then and then this is when it felt like the most cartoon be out of actually having cartoons. Is like, well, if you're watching, this face comes because there's a portrait of Blanche on the wall, which is weird because Gorgeous brings Blanche to the house. Yeah. Like, but then there's a bunch of cat. White big flat. Well, I think cat. I think that I think that 
Okay, that skeleton also is the goofy. Oh my god, I'm yeah, about the skeleton. <laughs> yeah, I am. I love. I love that skeleton. The skeleton is in the background when the finger eating happens. Yeah. Yes. And I like wish for like this makeshift uh, set I have that I had one of those skeletons because they just never notice it and it's just dancing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, part of me goes that had to mean something, but it probably didn't. I think he. I think the director. Who, like, this is full... It's not art tour, because I think they're just full creative. Like, I'm going to do what I want. Yeah. Asked his daughter, and his daughter said, I think that would be weird. Yeah, that, that definitely I feels like that a, would be a kid thing. But it is. Like, it's just... Oh, it's neat. I think the fact that they don't... Oh, I think they see it eventually, but, like, it is happening... They don't react to it. Right, right. It is happening, like, while they don't see it, and it's... I, I just like that supernatural stuff is not happening necessarily to the girls but it's just happening it's like happening while around we're watching, well, it's like the one it's great yeah it's like when the, the one girl's drinking out early drinking out of the well and it's blood yeah. right but yeah. like she's not reacting to it being blood yeah um oh one of them gets eaten by a clock yes yes like, yes like it happens <laughs> i like that like it's 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 it doesn't make i think i don't know if it's making great for audio but like a lot of it's i don't know it happens yeah yeah um but then we. But like of, to me, it, it makes sense when all that like it yeah. makes sense. Right? Like it just all of all of this like supernatural stuff is happening, and the house is just completely bewitched. And I think the cat is like a familiar of the aunt, and she was sent to gorgeous with a purpose, and gorgeous delivered. Yes, she certainly did. <laughs> There's one scene where like. It looks like Power Rangers. Oh my god, um, yes, yes. Where the ant is over the built over the house, like manatic manat I can't say that word. Manatically like laughing, like like, yeah. like a maniac. Yes. Just like laughing over and like this is kind of when you find out this whole like plot preposition and it's kung fu, prof, we're just gonna go with its prof, although I think prof might have been the one eaten by the clock. I th I don't know. I, I think I think that was I think Sweet was inside the club. <laughs> okay, so Sweet, like I said, like they do all kind of blend together. Yeah. Um, because they're most of the girls are tr like not aren't all like their physical traits. They're all like dressed the same, and except for like Mac, it's just yeah. the only one. Uh, and Gorgeous, because yeah. Gorgeous is supposed to be your our lead. That if there is a lead to this movie, yeah. And so, and it's one of the best scenes though in Kung Fu. She's like, save her, and like the room's filling up with blood. That the house is filling with blood, and all the magic. And she like, kung fu, cr like, cr like karate's, like, high kicks, full on, like, anime, the picture of the cat, and then like a ghost cat comes out, but it disrupts everything even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, then it's just kung fu's, like, lower body. Kicking Still, like the, like the limbs are fighting, and I just love I I eat it, that up. Goes, I mark the hell out. For and that. it still oh, good. stands by that the, these 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 girls were like told to act almost to everything without having a reaction. Yeah, like they, yeah. they do walk around the whole movie without a reaction. That yeah. was like my one kind of like it's all this like stereotypical like Japanese schoolgirl reaction like through a line. Yeah, and that is. What I want to note is, is like what you we talked about. Mr. Tello is coming to save the one girl's like Mr. Tello is coming to save them. Yeah, and that's why I thought it was the dad at first yeah, because yeah, the yeah. girls were also so interested in the dad. Yeah, yeah. Um, remember like at the beginning, it was like the one girl's like, "Oh, your dad must be doing well then if he's in Italy." Yeah, and yeah. It was like such a weird conversation. <laughs> he's imagine, like, well, I think he's like a famous composer or something. Yeah, yeah I think he's doing a movie like movie director or something. Or something. Yeah. But, like, imagine asking your friend's dad, like, or not asking your friend, like, your dad must be doing so well. Yeah, yeah, it's such a weird thing to say. Uh, so I thought that's who she had a crush on. But, meantime, one of the weirder scenes, and, like I said, is if you listen to this, I jump around everywhere. Um, and this is hard to be a weirder scene in this movie. I don't, um, is, so, the girls are all still kind of together, and something does happen, and then the watermelon guy face just pops in the side and it goes right back to the watermelon <laughs> stand and it's um it's gorgeous's dad try it, yeah it's gorgeous's no it's mr toho uh -huh. is it mr toho mm -hmm. that's why i got confused yeah it is the teacher it's the teacher yeah. he's coming 
looking for them. And then all of a sudden, um, the house isn't there anymore. But even more so, the watermelon man turns into a pile of bananas. He yes. literally goes bananas. And so does Mr. Toto. And so does Mr. Toto. They both turn into bananas. And the and the this almost stepmother. She's traveling. She passes up. that. She passes the banana people and just makes no. Yeah, we don't we don't see her forever. Yeah. And then eventually we see her. She's coming. Um there, but I'll get there in a minute. Um let's see. Oh, another scene too is like and this is when we get the exposition. Um so if you've been if you've been listening and following along, <laughs> we do have exposition. I just didn't want to blow it like immediately. Is we see gorgeous face comes out of like side view like a like a music video. Like a like an eighties weird yeah. music video. Yeah. And then she starts talking to the remaining girls. She says, My aunt invited us here because she wants um she wants to consume uh, the her and the house want to consume the unmarried, unmarried women. Yeah. Some haven't translated that to be also virgins, but I don't think that's necessarily true because they also consume the aunt at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, and I just imagine her and the dad have sex. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if the virgin thing is there, but consume unmarried women because it's all about marriage, not being married. Yeah. We find out the aunt has been dead the whole time. Six cents. Yes. The aunt died and basically summoned, like, she's just living there to to feast because yeah. she feels wronged. This is part of, I think, it being a World War II Hiroshima analogy is she feels wrong that she never got to marry her husband yeah. or her fiancé, that pinky promise that he would be back. Yeah, yes. Uh, and Gorgeous is disembodied head that looks, you know what it looks like? It looks like, this movie looks like... All the 80s and early 90s Nickelodeon advertisements. Oh my god. <laughs> like, someone must have seen that and been like, this yes. is what we're doing. Yeah, this is the aesthetic we want. Um, wow, yes. Right? Like, oh like uh, the only god. thing I can compare, like, a disembodied head talking to someone is, like, a Nickelodeon yeah. ad from, yeah. like, 1994. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that, that happens. And... I don't know what, what, what then then the, the the wife no yeah the wife showed or the fiance wife shows up and the wind's still blowing but all the girls are dead and like this as I said this is I think where the most like I'm sh shocked we get answers yeah um and she she shows up and she's like oh and she sees the house like like literally we weren't seeing the house she yeah. does see the house. She's on. This is what she's. I think she's unmarried. They yeah. get married. Yeah. Is um and gorgeous is there and gorgeous is is not the same girl we met in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I think she might be dead. I think she's she's the new aunt of yeah. the house. And I, you know, I never, I never like interpreted that as um the the girlfriend being unmarried, and that's why she was. She was killed. I never thought about that, but it makes sense. Well, uh, to me, it was just like gorgeous, like, like, like seeking revenge. Oh, I, I love. I love. Well, that. I just, if it if it what well, just makes me think that it yeah. is if it is a um if it is a if the movie is does have rules and this movie has no rules, yeah. yeah, then that would be part of their rules to me. Yeah. Yes. Um. So anyway, she tells them the girls like, "Oh, where's your friends?" And like, let's be real. They, the the new mother done nothing wrong. She's always pleasant and yes. nice. Um, an the movie just doesn't let gorgeous ever explore those emotions. At yeah, all. yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's like, "Oh, my friends will be here when they wake up. They'll be very hungry," implying the house is going to yes. now eat. Yes, she will be consumed. Aunt. And that, I mean, I don't know. That's house. Uh, my. Last follow-up question, and I guess is a little deeper, if you, is, so this is a movie all filled with women. And what I want to ask you, because uh, you are a woman, is, is there any sort of, like, feminist uh, message here that you see at all? Or, like, do you read it as that? Does it, like, connect on any of that level to you about this movie? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I... I don't know, not not really. I'm just wondering. But I, I, like, like I don't think it like. I don't think a movie 
not that I know this is not what you're implying, but like I don't think a movie that stars mostly women is is like inherently feminist. Oh, no. And I know that's not what you're saying. Oh no, this movie is also like sleazy at some point. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, like, yeah. like oh, it's yeah. sleazy. Like the young girls get get naked. Yeah. Um yeah. well the one I think is more of the shower. Yeah. Uh and that's not what I was playing with just like yeah. just the thought of like yeah. was there any of that in this cuz like none of the women are like empowering in this yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they're it's, all simplified to their basis. Yeah. And so yeah. is every character. And that that's kind of why it also feels like a cartoon to me because like it's it's they're just like like uh aligning with these tropes each of them and I kind of love it for well, that. <laughs> what yes, yeah, so all these tropes and what, um, just real quick with the naked, like I said, I was reading some facts and things, and, um, the woman who played the ant, so the one girl, I think for the bathing scene, yeah, not in the water, um, didn't want to do it, and, or was uncomfortable, and the ant, played the ant, got, just got naked, and was like, oh, I'll be naked with you, it'll be fine, oh. to, like, make her comfortable, and I thought it was, like, pretty neat, because that's all, you know, there's... It sounded like, from everything, adding on to that, though, it did sound like everything reading was like, oh, they all had a blast on these yeah, sets. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, was it, not it didn't a, sound like, like a Texas Chainsaw, like, traumatic no, we, experience. No, we hated though. it. Like, it <laughs> sounded like they all had a great time doing this movie. Yeah. Um, it's just a really unique movie. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. I, uh, we're not going to rate it, and it's not the point of this show to give a movie a rating. I, I don't think you can rate this no, movie. No. Um. It is, it is a five star movie for me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just happy. I just love it. I'm just happy it exists. Yes, me too. Uh, uh, one thing I am like super obsessed with is the random like '70s power pop band. Like oh, just that just popping plays. off with those hits. There's the one um we. I can't end the episode without failing to mention there is a full on cat song too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's insane. Yeah, the yeah, the <laughs> power about like, and I actually think so. The um, it's it sounds like meatloaf. Like it's it, does sound it like is. Meatloaf. This is like <laughs> it's it's like what I imagined was going through meatloaf's head and Jim Steinman's head when they were writing Bad Out of Hell. That's so ridiculous. And the craziest part is like, yeah, is so it, it, Japanese audiences apparently kids like like they connected they were like this was like a low kind of hit with like younger audiences yeah I adults it. everyone I did it. not get it i mean i think it critically destroyed yeah and then the rights were up or something in like 2008 9 and that's why i was oh. able to like be like released in america yeah. so it truly is a movie that i could have been lost to time yeah if yeah like th- at like, least here. At least here, but like thankfully we have criteria. Like we had to have this criterion yeah, collection. Yeah, um, it is. It is hilarious to me that it's on HBO Max now, and like I like I yeah. die imagining my dad like stumbling on it and watching it and being like, "What the well, fuck is this?" So there's also an '80s movie called House. Yes, yes. Which is an, another horror, con- very different type of horror comedy, yeah. but it's a horror comedy. I've, ne- I've never seen that, but I've seen it like. I've- I've seen it. I wasn't like a huge fan of it, but it, it's very different. It's about a house that also has like things living in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Not a remake, not any of that. But yeah. And even the name house, like in Japan, it is called house. Like, I mean, like if you look it up and on IMDb, I think it's Haku. I think it's Hausu. Hausu, sorry, yeah. Hausu. But I don't think they pitched it as house. Yeah. I read. Uh, that's. Because they didn't. They were that. like, it's I not going to get made. Like, there was, there was a lot of, like, things that were like, I don't know, we don't... And back to the beginning of this episode, this was an answer to Jaws. I, that is so insane to me, because it could not be more opposite of... Like, Jaws is so bare bones. Like, the, on the surface, I, and it's I, so bare bones, and I, so, like... I think what the... The like, maybe the thinking was like I said, the kid, a kid wrote the story of it. Yeah, was the director and like you know who's clearly very like like wants the mind of a kid was like, well, okay, if we're gonna make a Jaws in Japan, like someone's just gonna come up with like it's a bear now. Yeah, you know, yeah. like <laughs> yeah, like and not yeah. make um or something like a original kind of movie or something. Yeah, like- and I think that's what he was going for. Yeah. Um, 
And I watched some Just of like this. Japan's like blockbuster horror, maybe is what. Yeah, horror. that's probably what the that my answer. But yeah. so the only thing I think in that is there's like a dolly that. shot in it. Yeah. That's like um yeah. like Roy Scheider on the beach. Yes. Kind oh. of thing in this movie. Um, I'm so I'm so I can't stop thinking about that. Like that. I mean, Jaws, Jaws is one of my. It's like top five for me. Maybe, yeah. maybe top three. And, and I house. just like I can't. House is top ten for sure. House. House. I was actually disappointed. Uh, we talked about Bill Hader a little earlier. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a video, like, I think it's, like, 2010 or something, and he's in the Criterion closet. Oh, yeah, and yeah, And he's yeah. like, oh, how great. He's wearing the shirt. And then I, I think, because I Googled it today, and he he wrote, like, his, they had him write his top ten, like, Criterion. He didn't put it on it, which surprised me. I am going to need access to that. Oh, uh, you just got to, yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Like, it's <laughs> just top to ten. Like, the website does that with, like, a lot of, like, yeah. actors or writers yeah, or yeah, directors. Yeah. Oh, like, what God. are your top tens? And, um, so anyway, um, Sam, do you have anything else to add to house? Because it's, <laughs> it's truly, like, it's a movie that I think I could start talking about. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this podcast made sense. Um. And how kind of how we talked about it, where it does work more of like a night out, like we were drinking and then remembering what had happened the next day. Yeah, yes. Right? That that is that is definitely what it what like thinking about it after your first watch feels like. I yeah, think. That's, I, it, I, you're like piecing together moments and like vignettes, and I think when I want to feel heady, I'm gonna watch it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, like, at least the next Criterion sale, I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah. I, it's, I just, like... I think it's a cool, I think it's a cool movie to own. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't, I think you need to watch, if you, if you listen to this episode and you're like, that sounds interesting, great. You'll still be surprised by everything you listen yeah. to or watch. I mean, you will see, like... You also can't really see behind me, which is nice. Like, my head's blocking it. Um... But it'll all surprise you. Yeah. It, it's definitely one of those things where, like, you're still finding, you're still picking out pieces. Sure. After watching it multiple times. Like, it's not. Yeah. And it's funny. It's like, a, And it, it works well as a rewatch. It's a great, great rewatch. It, it's, um, yeah. And like I say, I think you either what if you, this sounded interesting, watch it. If it didn't, um, it's weird. You gotta have someone recommend it to you. I, I can't, I, and I can't recommend it. Like, that's my point of this is, like, I'm not gonna sit here right now, and this is what I've been trying to say, is, yeah, I think you all should watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You might, you might watch it. That is, that it, like, it's, it's so, like, what, you, could you see my wife watching this movie? No, absolutely like, not. Hey, absolutely not. Well, no. No, if we sat her <laughs> down for, like, cause, 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 like, there's a, cause it's not, so bad it's because it, it's not one of those ones like oh it's so bad it's good we'll laugh or ass yeah, like, yeah 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 like, it's like you watch it and you like think about it yeah yes. um there is one thing i do want to add um speaking about laura watch like not watching it but it being on is th like how this movie changes styles all the time and this was actually bothering me is she asked if our disc was broken Oh because the, there's like a long sequence where the frame rate's really slowed down. Yeah. So it looks like the film's skipping. But yeah. It's supposed to be in like just another sort of like yeah. tripped out sequence. Yeah, and it was kind of yeah. like hurting my it was kind of like hurting my eyes. Yeah. How like skip slow and she asked. I was like, oh no, it's just this movie. Yeah. Watch the next scene. Yeah. And then, yeah. You know, it goes to a normal speed. Yeah. Like I love like I love like when it becomes like a quasi silent movie when when Gorgeous is telling the girls about her aunt and and her her almost husband that that it's like yeah. black and white oh, like yeah. I think that's but but it is like really like the <laughs> but I love it oh no I love it, it so much it, the the style changes and like it, it's just trying to play with yeah. like its atmosphere and then like even even, even when when I think fantasy is having a fantasy about. The teacher like swooping in on his horse, like that is so. I hey, that's so good. It's so. You good. know what? Like it reminds me of of that the swooping on the horse. Um, and I know he's stealing it from movies like this, but like, um, Quentin Tarantino and like Kill Bill when they go to the shots of the bride driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. There's that bad like green screen, and yeah. it's very like stylized. That's that shot. Yeah, yeah. Th this is this is the most stylized movie I've 
I've ever oh, seen. It, I've it, ever seen. it will be and the I, weirdest. It's, it's it'll be the weirdest perfect. Silas movie will I will ever cover on this podcast. Yes. I cannot. I can guarantee that. Someone will, will pick like, uh, what's the one where they're having like a weird like human sex orgy at the end? Um, skin or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? No. No. Uh, uh, them. Oh. Them. <laughs> Oh, uh, there's anyway, just one of those like weird splatter yeah. like effects, like yeah, super weird. Not it's not it's not this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, this is its own lane. Of... Video drum wishes. <laughs> like, I just got video drum oh, like, yes! criterion. Let's go! Oh my god. Um, this is the criterion episode where we just <laughs> bougie. Just, but we I did, sound like I, I did, I did tweet out uh about that. A twenty four wishes they could pick up a. Uh, a house. Oh my god. Yes. And, and just yes. like and just like fart into their wine glasses yes. to go, mm, isn't it isn't it so yes. meaningful and good? And like yes. I said, I do think there's meaning here and yeah. I think this is special, but like it has to be it has to be the movies like this have to be made in jest. Like they have to be made um like earnestly. Like yes. you, you don't want to see like if someone set out to make I'm gonna make the weirdest art house movie it can. Yeah. That's just what ends up in the straight to video and like uh, Sam, Sam, me and Sam, uh, we watch so bad it's good movies like every Wednesday almost. Like that's what those end up. As. It makes me think of like, like Tommy Wiseau making the room. Yes, it, completely earnestly, and mm -hmm. then like everything he did. Yeah. After that, was trying to like capture that on purpose. So, Not like he's like my like goal but, of filmmaking, but like I think what it separates just, it was unwatchable but because I think what separates this from I, the room. I would no, never. No, 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 <laughs> no. But but that's what I was getting at in this explanation. Yeah. Is. It's not a so bad it's good movie, right, and that's right. at the end of the day, it's just a surrealist art house yeah. piece, yes. and an artist made it. Yeah. Yes. Um, the Room, and I think that's a great movie to use, because that is the <laughs> pinnacle of, I made this earnestly, we laugh our asses off, yeah. is that is is not made by, like, someone purposely making this to be art. Like, yeah, yes. Every decision here was made purposely, whether it's because it was childlike or yeah. whatever it is, it's it's a comparably made movie. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. So, that's... Yeah, so house. I I uh yeah, I endorse it. Yes. I think it's fun. Yes. Um weirdly enough, like and would you so would you want to sit with friends and watch house or would you that's I think my last question. Would you want to sit with friends and watch house or would you rather watch it to yourself? Because I think I really enjoyed it myself because I could focus on it. Yeah, I think I don't think I would have wanted to watch it for the first time mm -hmm. with other people, but now I yeah, completely I mean, like, relish like it. showing it to people sure. and like watching it with them and kind of watching them watch it. Yeah. No, I I um, um Yeah. I wanna... Yeah, I think I would watch I think I would watch Okay, with people. great. Um so Sam, anything else you wanna add um to our discussion of house? No. Okay. That was comprehensive. <laughs> good. Good. Um that's what we all strive for, just to be comprehensive. Uh so Sam, where can um, the people find you if they want to uh, you know, find about Sam or anything to promote or plug or. No, I have nothing to plug. Or, I am, okay. I'm on. I am on Twitter. That's it. What's your, what's your Twitter <laughs> handle. It's. I, It'll it, be in the description. Oh, it. Wait, what is it? It's it like is Sam Scrops. Sam It'll be in the it's description. Yeah. It's fine. It's. it's oh, uh, you can find Sam at your local library. Oh, don't uh, say that. <laughs> uh. And you could find me on Twitter also at Chandigo One and on this channel and all the recent flyover stuff. Uh, stay frightful, everyone. Welcome to Flyover State of Fear.